I'm Felicia. And I'm John Carlo. This is our review of Chaosmos. It's kind of like Cosmos and Chaos. The artwork is, is actually, well, you'll see what we got to say about the artwork. Um, it's good. It looks good. Look at, look I at don't want to give it away. It's just, it's, it's very hentai Japanese. I did a couple of tabs of. Players take on the role of a covert agent from their galactic race in search of the one artifact that may save them from the collapse of the universe, the Ovoid. They'll use cunning, deduction, and deception as their primary weapon against the other players. The player that has the Ovoid in their hand at the end game wins. For your first game, set up the planet hexes as such with the chaos clock in the middle at 36, two asteroid tokens next to it, and two wormhole tiles as such. Place the void hex next to the main board. Play with only these four alien races and randomly give one sheet to each player. They'll place three hyper tokens on their sheet and place their matching miniature on their home planet. They'll also take their matching home planet envelope. Take the equipment cards and keep only the ones without any icons here. Shuffle them and reveal six to create the cosmic pool. Deal ten in a four player game to each player and they'll choose seven for their hand and put the remaining three in their home envelope. Take the other planet's envelope. Place four cards in each without looking at them and place them in the envelope box with their names face up. Give each player a reference card, randomly determine the first player, and you're ready for your quest to salvation. Each turn, a player will have three actions represented by this icon. They can repeat or do any of the available options in any sequence. They are move, hyperspace, control planet, play a card, attack, and trade. To move, it'll cost you one action per movement. You can move from one planet to a neighboring star and vice versa. You can move from a planet to a wormhole which will bring you to the nearest star for one action. With the chaos clock on the board, treat a star and its opposing one as the same star. Asteroid belts cannot be crossed. And lastly, you can spend a hyper token for an action and move anywhere on the board. Should you end on a planet that has its envelope in the box, you may attempt to control it. First, note that the planet is not toxic to your race. This will be conveniently listed on your alien sheet. If it is, you must reveal the Enviro gear from your hand or you cannot proceed. Then take the envelope and open it and see if there's a face-up card. These are cards that impede you from progressing and take the form of a trap, vault, or base. We'll get into card anatomy a little later. Should you pass or not reveal any face-up card from the envelope, you can look at these cards secretly and exchange them with any in your hand as long as you don't pass your 7-card hand limit. You can reactivate any trap, vault, or base cards. A rule to remember is that you cannot have more than one face-up card in an envelope and at least one face-down card. You now control that planet, so place the envelope in front of you. Let's take a look at Cards Anatomy, which will help you for the next action, Play Cards. The top left of the cards will tell you how many actions are required to play the card, if any. This other symbol means these cards can only be played in combat. Some will also have the void icon, which means these are one-shot use, and are discarded to the void when done. Traps, vaults, and bases will have a sidebar. These can be placed in controlled envelopes, face up to hinder other players on later turns. Vaults require a key. Bases require you fighting them, and traps will make you lose your envelope. Travel to your home planet and make you lose the rest of your turn. Other equipment cards have a variety of effects, from taking cards from the void, to mimicking other cards played, to traveling faster and gaining more action points. Combat cards will have pluses to add to your attack value, which brings us to our next action, attack. Should you be on the same space as another player, you may choose to attack him as an action. It's important to note, you can't attack the same player twice in a turn. The defender will roll the two blue dice, the attacker will do the same with the red dice. Each will total their roll for a sum. The mirror will be considered the same value as the other die rolled. Should you roll two mirrors, this is called infinity and you will auto win with the attack step ending. But if this didn't happen, total your value up. The player with the lowest value will have to play combat cards to at least equal or go above the opponent's total. Then the other player does the same until both players pass, usually from not being able to play any more cards. All cards used in battle with the void icon are discarded, while the others return to each owner's hand. The winner will have a choice to either collect the spoils or banish the loser. Spoils allow the winner to take a card from the loser's hand. Banish lets you send the player to a planet of your choice. 
Should it have been his turn, it also immediately ends it. If the loser controlled the planet, the winner may immediately control it as a free action, even if it's not their turn. Speaking of free action, a player, on their turn, may trade one card with the Cosmic Pool as a free action if they've been on their home planet, and only once per turn. At the end of a player's turn, turn the Chaos Clock one space closer to Doom. Play passes to the next player clockwise. When the Chaos Clock reaches zero, the player who has the Ovoid is the winner. Should no one have it, you all failed and lose. It's surprising to see a new concept in board gaming nowadays, more so when it actually works and is fun for everyone. Having players guess where the Ovoid is when you know and keeping them guessing is a blast. And that's what I think Chaosmos does extremely well. It's his ability to remind us what board gaming should be about. The fun factor. Chaosmos is really high and it had us laughing all the way through in multiple games. Watching people suspiciously and trying not to laugh or give anything away was a hoot. The production quality is really good as well. I was a little worried about losing track on the Chaos Clock if it came with a flimsy wheel, but it didn't. They've included these rubber feet to keep it solidly into place. Great attention to detail. The artwork has its own style, but I would have liked a little more variety from the aliens. They seem like they all came from the mind of a Japanese hentai cartoonist high on acid. But hey, it's a style and it works, so only a half point penalty on alien variety. Another half point penalty would be for alien race abilities. Some were imbalanced, but not so much as it becomes a detriment to the game. The equipment cards as well had some minor imbalances, but again, not a detriment. And sometimes, even though your deduction is dead on, tactically you might be limited to take full advantage. To alleviate these imbalances, however, the game has so many options from advanced rules, modular boards, and making up house rules easily that customization and replay value is high. Captured within all these elements so far is the great sense of theme. The history of Chaosmos and its aliens are all well written and make players more invested in the game. Fun, engrossing, with lots of player interaction, and never feeling out of the race before the end, it's a game everyone should try, just for its uniqueness if nothing else. Not perfect, but with its imperfection being so minute at half point penalty each, Chaosmos gets an 8 out of 10. Can't wait to see what Mirrorbox Games has in store for us next.